Hello guys, in this video we will explore krigler najjar syndrome type 2 also known as Arias syndrome. So this is also a rare genetic disorder related to bilirubin metabolism. The main problem in this condition is a moderate reduction in the levels of the enzyme UDP glucuronyl transferase. We can often call it as UDP glucuronosal transferase. So this enzyme is mainly responsible for conjugating bilirubin in the liver, making it water soluble so it can be excreted easily. But what happens is in this condition the enzyme activity is reduced but not completely absent like what we have seen in the krigler najjar syndrome type 1 which is why this disease is much milder compared to that of the type 1. Now let's discuss the clinical features. So most patients with this syndrome are asymptomatic and do not experience neonatal jaundice like type 1 which is a key difference between type 1 form. Importantly, there are no neurological symptoms in type 2 which means these patients do not develop kernic terrors and the severe brain damage caused by a very high levels of conjugated bilirubin what we have seen in the type 1. And the diagnosis of the krigler najjar syndrome type 2 is mainly based upon the lab findings. In this conditions, the patients typically have elevated indirect bilirubins usually less than 20 milligrams per deciliter. And even in this condition also, liver function tests are absolutely normal and there is no evidence of hemolysis which rules out the conditions with hemolytic anemias. So a key diagnostic clue is that the condition responds to phenobarbital therapy which reduces the serum bilirubin levels by inducing the activity of remaining UDP glucuronyl transferase. So that's how also we can clearly differentiate between type 1 and type 2. Treatment is usually not required because the risk of developing kernic terrors is low. However, if the patients become ectoric, meaning they develop a noticeable jaundice, there are treatment options available. First, phenobarbital is a drug of choice, I can say. It induces the enzyme UDP glucuronosal transferase, helping to lower bilirubin levels. And second one is the phototherapy. Phototherapy can also be used as an additional measure mainly to reduce the bilirubin but it is very important for the patients to avoid triggers that can worsen their condition such as hormonal contraceptives or drugs that inhibit hepatic enzymes. So finally let's talk about the prognosis. With appropriate management of jaundice patients with this type 2 can lead a normal quality of life. This makes the condition much less concerning compared to that of type 1 which requires more aggressive treatment like liver transplantation. So this is what we need to know about the Krigler-Najjar syndrome type 2. 